As I have said before, uh, the gate from the lane to the town road had to be closed at all times. Sometimes there would be runaway cows on the road and they would come in and enter a garden field, a cornfield, or whatever was planted in a field and destroy the crop. That happened now and then and there would be ill feeling between the neighbors. Of course, no one wanted his cattle to roam the roads, but if a fence was broken down or the animals were good jumpers and a gate was accidentally left open, these things happened. In the evening, my father would say, is the gate to the road closed properly? We always said it was, but sometimes it wasn't. Many times he would send us even late in the evening to go check. With a lantern in hand, several of us would start out, scared or wary of skunks or whatever made sounds. And all these noises seemed extremely loud. If the gate was opened, we would be satisfied that we went. But if we found it already closed, we were even more terrified of the sound. I may add here that the big gate could swing easily to the latch, although it was very, very heavy. Before we closed the gate and hooked it tightly, we'd get on it and enjoy swinging on it back and forth. Needless to say, that gate had to be fixed quite often because we wrecked it. Boy, would my father yell at us sometimes even spank us for doing what we were told not to do. However, show me a young one who wouldn't swing on a gate when the opportunity presented itself. I may add here that when uh, we girls went, or the younger children went to close the gate carrying the lantern, the older boys would be hidden behind the fences making all sorts of hoot owl sounds and scaring the daylights out of us. My sister Sue can vouch for that. Now, we didn't have play gyms as children do now in their yards. We did our climbing, jumping, hanging, and swinging on very natural arrangements. Branches of trees served us well. There were very few trees the boys couldn't shinny up. I climbed, but I couldn't shinny like they could. In fact, sometimes we hurt ourselves, but that didn't stop us. We did it again and again. I must have been about eight or nine years old, maybe ten, when I decided the boys wouldn't show me up and call me a sissy or a silly little girl. On our property, beyond the cultivatable fields, was a hill. In fact, there were two hills with a plateau between the two. On the top of the second hill was a row of black ox heart cherry trees, about six or eight of them. So very tall and inviting for a climb. The boys, Bill and old Walter, were already up there munching away bidding the pits out as far as they could into the air. Sissy, sissy, they called. You can't climb up. Ha, ha, ha. Jenny is a sissy. Well, I'd show them. I struggled and struggled until I made it. I had climbed the big cherry tree in the woods. That made me happy. Then they dared me to go further toward the end of the branch to get some extra luscious cherries, and I thought, I'll show them. I certainly did show them. I inched toward the thinner part of the branch when I started slipping. Down I went, caught myself on a lower branch, and jumped to the ground. How they laughed, but had to pay for my bravery, I did. I wrenched my back and barely made it back home. I tried so hard not to let my mother know that I was hurt. You see, she had warned me 
over and over again not to try to keep up with the boys. I was a girl and was supposed to act like a lady, not a tomboy. Well, she asked me to do something and I couldn't stoop over. Boy, did I get a scolding then. She rubbed my back, even worried and cried over my hurts. She was afraid that I might have hurt myself permanently. I didn't think I did, but I did suffer with my back a long time. How could I not follow the boys? There were no little girls to play with until my two sisters were born. I had two older brothers, then two younger ones, and finally my sister Stell, and later Sue. I always felt I should compete with the boys. I remember one time Walter, or Bill, maybe both of them, dared me to carry a bag of potatoes into the cellar. How they laughed when I picked the bag up and promptly fell over when I did it. I can still see those two laughing at me. Talking about these cherries, my mother used to preserve these cherries. We had to pick them by the pailful. My father would lean a tall ladder against the branches of the trees and we'd climb it to reach the juiciest and the ripest ones. Usually, they were to be found on the ends of the branches. How we enjoyed them as a dessert in the winter. I think whoever planted the cherry trees must have been partial to that fruit because we must have had at least six huge trees in our backyard along the stone wall fence. There we go, the stone wall fence again. Oh, these trees were very bountiful and there was enough for the many varieties of birds as well as for us because birds loved to eat them too.